Uh, we survived, Pat. Mm. We survived another U.S. election. Which the, these used to be the most boring thing when I was in middle school. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember anyone giving two rats. Do you remember how boring the Obama McCain election was? Like, oh, yeah. It was like, why are people watching this? Why don't we just go to bed? Like Bush Carey. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. And last night, though, dude, something pretty crazy happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and before we get into it and all for our opinions, we just want to say first, welcome to the Mickey Pat Show. Uh, happy that you're here joining us. This is, of course, recorded November 6th, post the election. We'll see when it gets out because we had a very, very special interview with a certain uh, bow hunter, Paul Navarre, that mm-hmm. we were privileged to talk to him and hear his point of view. And so we're editing those uh, episodes, probably right, Pat? Two episodes, you think? Yeah, it's going to be two parter. Two parter. Yeah. Less, I don't know if anybody's in for the three hours. Yeah. It's a, it was a great interview. It's but worth three hours. It, it, but it, it is, but we'll, we'll break it down into part one, part two. So it's a little bit more digestible. And uh, you can, uh, part two is pretty much just going to be the, the hunt story, mm-hmm. him telling good old hunt stories. And part one's a little bit more him educating us on the, nature and politics of getting into bow hunting in Colorado and all that. But anyways, um, you know, before we got too far ahead, man, and got really into these things, I saw something at the store. Really? Yeah, I was out there tonight, actually. It was mm-hmm. right after dinner on my way here. Mm-hmm. I saw it and I was like, it made me really think of you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I hit it here in the studio so that way you want to see it. I just want you to know is you're not going to be complimented. You're not going to be flattered. <laughs> right. And those who are longtime listeners will recognize what this is after I pull it out and you hear <sighs> Pat's reaction. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what could it be? It's behind the curtains. Well, it's a new variety pack from New Belgium. Mm. Really? Yeah, it's got uh, Trapel, mm. Belgian style air, which I love a Trapel. Mm-hmm. It's got the Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA, mm. the mm-hmm. Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA, mm-hmm. and the Holiday Ale. Oh, the <laughs> holiday ale. We have to. I want to watch you drink one, and I want to. I want you to tell me it's still, it's still only <laughs> one thumb down. <laughs> I want you to look me in the eyes. I think we need to blind grab in, and whatever you pull out, is what you have to drink. Oh God! <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Just since we're already going to be going over a nasty subject like the election, we'll be. Uh, all right, mm. all right, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, so for those of you who might not know, we did a, uh, you know, a Christmas beer review a couple, a couple uh, last year maybe I think it was when we did the, the holiday ale, and uh, it was, uh, it was not. Um, it was bad. It tasted it was like not a good. Mm-hmm. I said it tasted like someone poured piss beer into a potpourri bowl uh-huh. and just let it sit there. And the rub is because I gave it. I, I gave this is the it the worst beer I've ever had a, on this podcast. A little bit of a point just for um for the marketing factor, I think, because that that's what got that's what got it. And it's a rough one. Um even like the new Belgium guys when I, <laughs> I went on a mm-hmm. tour there, and I was like, Yeah, so what was up with that? Did something go wrong with that? Like that tasted so awful. And he's like, No, dude, I don't know who passed off on that. That was the grossest beer I've ever had here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, dude, you know it's bad like when the tour guide's not even like trying to cover. He's yeah. just like, no, it was garbage. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't even give you the fake news. Just Which I respected. I respected him oh, owning yeah. up to it and not trying to hide from it. Telling you the real deal. Yeah. Oh, man. So are you going to put three in, three types in there? Just and three at the top. Just three at the top and one is one is the bad? Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see how it goes. Man alive, the... Uh, it's a. Uh, it is. We're already approaching the holiday seasons, though, which I'm excited about. We, had, we got a, a tiny dusting of snow today down at my at my folks' neck of the woods. They got ten inches today. No way. Yeah, ten inches down in the um down in the woods, and so I think uh, we went straight from uh, uh just summer to winter. There's yeah, not, not a lot really of fall was. here. Not really a lot of fall was. here. Um, and by the way, Mick just was mixing those like the, <laughs> like the Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh, shit. I got the tripo. <laughs> okay, all right, let me mix these up so that way it's still fair. All right. <laughs> Oh man! All right, here, you do a little bit of mixing, and I'll draw from it. All right, all right. You just honestly need to just have a cooler. (laughs) All right, here we go. (sighs) Here's the choice. It's the big draw. What's he gonna get? Please God! Oh, he got the Trapel. Also, no one has to drink it yet. Um, on in like two weeks from now, if we keep playing this game, we're gonna end up with like just have Dean come on again and just be like, Dean, draw yeah. for a beer, and it's well, just only those left. <laughs> well, it's gonna be like playing Russian roulette, where at the end, like you know, the bull is coming. Yeah, there's no more. Uh, there's just three in the bottom. Oh man. Um, before That's we get funny. into election stuff and all that, uh, Pat, you know, I feel like it's only right that you, uh, since hunting's been a topic lately. Do you got anything you want to give us debrief wise from your elk hunt? You want, you had two elk tags this year. I did. I did. I had uh, I had two elk tags, um, and I got to take. Um, I went out with, went out with two buddies, one who I've been meaning to go on a hunt with for like literally ten years. Like ten years ago, we talked about going on it. We just never made it happen. And then is he a hunter? He's a hunter. He's a you know he's like, um, yep, yeah, he's a hunter. He gets out there. Um, he wouldn't consider himself like an avid. Hunter, you know, but he's like he he gets out and hunts, and then mm-hmm. the other fella was a, a new guy who to the hunting world, and he was super gung ho this year. Super fun to watch him be all excited about getting all the gear, finding you know, uh, doing a you know, e scouting, finding spots where the elk might mm-hmm. be, and all that. And so we put together a trip. The three of us went out there, and we did what a lot of elk hunters do, which is we go spend a week in the woods hiking with rifles, and so we. Nothing um, better than yeah. <laughs> buying a gun that you don't get to shoot it, but you get to hike around with your gun a lot. Yep, that's why you should get a light one. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even matter how hard it hits. But the um so no, we like it was it was a good hunt. Um I'd say the success from it, we we didn't harvest this year, but we did every day we got closer and closer to like starting off day one, we didn't even see any elk poop, period. Which mm. is like that means you're you're in the wrong spot. You're in the very wrong spot because I spent most of my time not killing elk, just walking around on top of elk poop all the time. Yeah, it's like you if you're like even getting even if you're getting skunked, you're at least like seeing tons of sign. Yeah. Um. But then, like you know, day two we got in a better spot where someone had had killed one the day before and stuff like that, and we got closer and closer till our last morning. You know the the flaw we made was it was like day four or five and we'd been up early and grinded hiking every day and i was sick starting the trip off and i got both the other bros sick which i'm is a bummer it was kind of inevitable though sharing like a small camper you know bro dude why were you kissing them i know the camper right? yeah that's what hunters do <laughs> um but we so that's what hunters do we tuck our buddies and then give them smooches good night <laughs> exactly um but we were getting pretty smoked and like that last day, like, all right, let's like, let's sleep in. And so we, we slept in half an hour. Then we snoozed our clocks, like another, mm-hmm. like 20 minutes. So we ended up hiking in to our spot about an hour late where we wanted to go. And we'd marked a spot on the map. Like we'd put an X on the map and we hiked into that spot. Um, and that morning as the sun's coming up, we were just a little too loud, a little too fast getting in there and a little too late. And literally on the X we had marked, there was six elk, mm. but we saw them just leaving the area as we had kind of blown them out of there. So close, but no cigar on, on the elk this year. Did either of those guys have a tag or they, were they just there as support in, no, to help ruck and ruck it out? No, we all had tags. Uh, we all had cow tags. And then over I, the counter? Uh, the cow tags are a draw. So okay. we all had cow tags and I had an over the counter bull tag. So nice. could have come out of there with. You know, a lot of meat, four of them, but, um, yeah, that was, uh, you know, that's usually how my elk hunting goes. That's how There's I feel like most people's elk hunting goes, mm-hmm. unless you're Paul. Unless you're Paul. Did you hear like the fact that he's like, yeah, the last 12 years I've gotten an elk there. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, what? Yeah. It's a, it's a super impressive. Um, I mean, he uses a bow and arrow. He's not a spring chicken. And he's he gets get, it within twenty hours. Can you imagine how what it looks like to see him get into like coverage? Like I imagine like when he was telling this story and he's like, 
Yeah, she's my wife was back at the car, and then I just run down and starts creeping up on it. I'm like, does he just like disappear with the wind? Like yeah. you know, what I mean, like yeah. you know, like because I'm just trying to picture how this guy, this 84 year old guy, he's not he's not a small man. Mm-hmm. He's like average sized man size, mm-hmm. I think. But like he just gets down to these bushes and like army crawls up to him. I'm just really trying to figure out like how that guy. He's sneaky. Yeah, I met. It's <laughs> he's he's like a little little gnome. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Little little sneaky goblin. He just <laughs> yeah, like just it is like he can disappear like a vapor and just reappear. But yeah. And I think uh, one of my big, like, he's got to be a patient guy. That's mm-hmm. my problem, too. Is I get impatient. Like, oh, I can just rush up in there. And really? It's like, no, you got to, like, you got to, sometimes you got to, like, take your shoes off. <laughs> and, like, if you're doing archery, like, yeah. sometimes you got to take your boots off and cover 40 yards in one hour. Wow. So it's like, that's that's, that's patience, slow. you know, and that's slow. Yeah. And, then the, and then the key there is also knowing when to not do that, when you have to be like, all right, we got to cover a mile and a half right now. now. Yeah. And then sneak for two hours. Like mm-hmm. it's like the in, the intuition there, knowing when to do that. It's, that's the little instinct I don't have or have never been taught, but yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, cause I also know guys who I think, you know, like I said, I've never been hunting more than small game stuff, but I think I know guys who I think are like good hunters. Like mm-hmm. they are dudes who every year without fail, go out to hunt. Mm hmm. And they have stuff hanging up in their houses of the things they've hunted. Mm -hmm. And those guys do not have remotely close to the consistent amount of kills that Paul gets. Right. Like, I I mean, when he was saying those numbers, I was just like, that's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys, like, they'll get 12 elk their entire life if they're really lucky. Like, really, really lucky. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, I was like, this is a dude who's like an expert in his craft. Which makes sense. I mean, he, he lives and breathes by it. So mm-hmm. I think uh, it'd be fun to shoot bows with him just to yeah. see, like, because also, like, once it's not a done deal once you snuck up on him. And then when he's taking him with a recurve, yeah, it's like that's because um, the recurve is the one that doesn't have the like you don't draw it and it cams. locks. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't hold weight for you, it doesn't hold weight for you. So you and, gotta draw it yourself. Mm-hmm. Bro, and you can't. Can you imagine what he looks like with the shirt off? He his was chest and back. He looked like he was pretty ripped. He was a barrel, dude. Yeah, he's a barrel of a man. Yeah, yep. Yeah. At uh, at the at eighty five. Yeah, just getting after it. Super impressed. Super impressed. And um, Andy's just like I don't know. He's not also not not braggadocious or it's boisterous. Not yeah, he's just like. <laughs> He's like one Just of the nicest guys. Nice, humble man is yeah. yeah, super, super cool to get to talk with him. Yeah. I think if anything, like if there's anything that like I, I'll say this. If I can figure out some way or method to literally do, you know, well, I'll do whatever is in my power to get him that shot at a big horn. Mm-hmm. Like I'm I've been reading into it a lot. Mm-hmm. And I know you were wondering like if the tags are like um not tradable, but like, like transferable, transferable, can, like, yeah. yeah, something like that. And like, I'm just like, dude, like, hell, just like, even give them the opportunity, like the donate opportunity, because it's not like there's a hundred or even like there's not even like uh, fifty other guys right now who have mm-hmm. gone the big nine bow hunting mm-hmm. and are alive and are ready to go for the big horn. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they only. Like, there's a ton of people who apply for the Bighorn, but, like, he's the only one probably mm-hmm. alive in Colorado today mm-hmm. who's got 9 out of 10 with a bow. Yep. And the rest of the people are working their way to that, but like, I'm just like, dude, it would be a crime for this mm-hmm. guy to not get that shot. And what's crazy is, like, the hunt aspect on that's, like, it's up there on cliffs and really? high elevation. Yeah. Like, so- the... It's a strong young man's game. It's yeah. It's not just like so. It's it's a it's gonna be a, um, because yeah, he and he's because he's already taken one big horn, Rocky Mountain big horn. Now he's gonna take desert big horn. Is it desert big zone. horn? That's on just the western slope, though, right? Um, like it's all along the western slope on that side, more towards Grand Junction and stuff. I honestly, don't know, but I'd assume something like that, or, or even yeah. that, even maybe further south. And you got to think that's a little bit easier, open terrain be. wise. Mm-hmm. Not as brutal as the eastern side. Yeah. I, I genuinely think the eastern slope versus western slope is like 
night and day difference. Like mm. for people who aren't, you know, from Colorado and haven't spent much, much time there, like I, I really do think like the Western Slope looks so much more approachable than mm. when you're looking at like the Eastern side and you're like, good God, how did people get over those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but anyways, good stuff. Good mm-hmm. stuff. As you can tell, we really loved our interview with them, so go go ahead and check it out. This is probably coming out after that episode's released, or maybe before. I don't know. Yeah, we'll but, see what happens. Yeah, and if it looked long, like that's like you know, like, like I said, we're gonna break it up into two parts. And I think like they'll both be a little long, but they're they're worth it. Yeah. Smoke break. Smoke break. Hey, Ken. It's Mick. And I've got something important to talk about. We all hope we never find ourselves in a self-defense situation, but life's unpredictable. Enter the National Self-Protection Plan from Attorneys on Retainer, an actual credible law firm you can put on retainer for your self-defense needs. For just $35 a month, you get national coverage in all 50 states for criminal and civil legal representation in self-defense situations, complete with a 24-7, 365 toll-free emergency line. That's real legal support when you need it most. What's in the package? Bail bonds, scene cleanup, firearm replacement, even mental health counseling. Plus, zero fees for a laundry list of defense-related costs like expert witnesses. So support the show and get yourself some peace of mind. Click the link in our show notes or visit our sponsors page to sign up for the National Self-Protection Plan from Attorneys on Retainer. Hey folks, Pat here. If you're like Mick and I, you're a fan of classic tales like Lonesome Dove, Blood Meridian three-body problem and Steinbeck's East of Eden. With Audible, you can dive into these epic stories anytime, anywhere. Sign up for a free month and your first audiobook is on the house. To start your free trial and support our show, click the link in the show notes or swing by the sponsors page on our website. Want an awesome website for your podcast? Check out PodPage. We use it for the Mick and Pat show and it's a game changer. Set it up in minutes, no coding needed. Support the show by using our link to get started. Your podcast deserves a home as great as ours. PodPage, the one-stop solution. Um, on to the big news, of course, that just occurred last night for us. Donald Trump, 47th president. And not only that, but I'm pretty sure we have majority Senate. And did we get majority House as well? Um, I think so. I, didn't, I say I we, I guess that just gives away my like <laughs> leniency. <Yeah. sighs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like a diehard Republican or anything. I'm definitely conservative in my values, mm-hmm. but it does feel good to know that like we have two years where we could probably get some good stuff done. There's something about, yeah, it's like, okay, so if you've got a Supreme Court, House, Senate, Congress, and President who are all aligned, it's like, it, the, I think... Honestly, if you had a more moderate left, then it could be great too, as well as just to have like not having this um, filibustering, bogged down, can't get anything done, government shut down, bureaucratic caca. You know, it's like, bro, what needs to happen? I know this is not going to be popular with a lot of people who might listen to this, but mm-hmm. we need to have the government gutted. It needs to be gutted like a freaking pig, just like the way. Um, down in uh it was in south america i can't remember it's not chile um maybe it was chile no um where is it where's patagonia at that's not in chile that's in argentina argentina yeah the argentinian government their new prime minister or president he just totally disemboweled the government and all of its departments Mm -hmm. And just threw them all out, all out, cut off funding day one, dissolved them. And like, mm. there was, yeah, really high unemployment rate, rate for a little bit. And then mm. guess what? The commercial market has come in and swept up. And they're now mm. like, Argentina's like already debt free. Mm. In like only two years, he's been president or prime minister. Wow. Yeah. And, it, it, it's un- and they were so deeply in debt. Um, And I know that's like exactly kind of how... uh. Trump and Elon were mentioning like the financial approach to the uh, government audit because Elon's going to be the uh, <laughs> auditor apparently <laughs> which bro like after t- what he did to Twitter yeah but guess what like Twitter's still standing mm-hmm. and yeah there was an ugly 
you know, Valley for Twitter, but I think it's a better platform today for it. I mean, yeah, we got as someone who doesn't use it. We've <laughs> yeah, got, like I have no, I don't spend any time on it for sure. We got uh, two point two full time or two point two million full time federal employed people, and uh, that's a lot of people, dude. And there's so there's so much blow around all of it. As someone who like works as a government contractor, right? Like mm-hmm. there's just so much I see that is just bloated and slow mm-hmm. and it's just like wow wow like this also there's just like people like when they get the job dude they never get fired like the government never fires people it's mm-hmm. so like the people have to be dismissed from their jobs because they royally f up mm-hmm. uh, i've had people in the consulting world tell me like oh it's it, dude it's it's green welfare is what they call it mm-hmm. because you get a job working for the federal government and you just know like you'll never get you might get like furloughed for like a season of a government shutdown. Yep. You'll still get paid. And like you just you just don't have to come into work. And yep. like you just whether whether you work for the post office yep. all the way up to a tippy top, you know, you'll office never get somewhere fired. in DC, you know, it's like Yeah, and so I think that I like uh, one of the most savage guys around it was Vivek. Yep. Like that was like you know, like he was talking about cutting it like I was like that's maybe a little bit too much because we didn't have to slow down on that cutting. But right, the, dude, I'm almost. I'll say this: like mm-hmm. I've heard so many good arguments for cutting stuff, like the Department of Education, like mm-hmm. literally quartering the Department of Education and being like, "All right, we can keep one quarter of this because mm-hmm. the rest of this is freaking bloat." Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I was just like, "Wow, that's that's bonkers." But like, I'm also like, when I'm hearing out the case and the cost of mm-hmm. it, I'm like, okay, I don't see why not. Oh yeah, or like and like, uh, gosh, like if you if you cut out the bloat too, the actual needs in the vacuum will be filled by the private sector too. Will be filled by private sector, and this is the thing that everyone keeps on talking about. They're talking about how like the government's so in debt, mm-hmm. and taxes are high, and they need a they can't we can't get rid of income tax we can't get rid we can't reduce taxes because if we do the government will default on the debt it owes Mm -hmm. Uh, but the truth is is if the government guts itself the cost of maintenance and operation for the government drastically declines Mm -hmm. therefore requires less taxes Mm -hmm. to operate and it can therefore stop spending money on different departments and personnel and that money then goes to paying off the national debt like we make enough money uh let me see let me pull this up i'm just gonna make sure to double check my stuff like, but i'm pretty sure like the u the united states of america like the federal government's uh ebitda mm-hmm. is this is more than like our current standing debt like if if some really brutal gutting and stuff occurred we could probably pay off the national debt mm-hmm. in like four years with some good like conservative management and conservative spending yeah and like what was the stat I, I, I don't want to totally like talk out of my butt on it like what do we owe right now uh, however many trillions I think um, right now we're at like uh, I think it, it's over 70 trillion I believe 70 trillion how many zeros are on 70 trillion a lot one to, so I, was, I wanted to do what, what what I was looking at one point was this sounds off now that I'm thinking about it, it was like it was like it equates like every American being like if every American paid a hundred thousand dollars we'd be out of it that's got to be wrong yeah no that, we're I don't deeper think that's than right. that yeah. yeah yeah we're deeper we're deeper than that way deeper because yeah, yeah I was like when I saw that stat I was like we should be able to get out of that fast <laughs> but yeah scratch that I was a uh, I was fed some false information by somebody i don't know i don't know about that well, well let's we'll do the math do the math 370 million times 100 how much is that ask ask, ask the google so that that's will true. automatically tell you what those zeros mean that's true that's true here we go all right we are calculating oh need one more zero times 100 Oh, it gave me a to the power. 
So I don't. I don't know. I can't. I can't do that. As, no, put it in Google. What's all right? What is it? Let me do it. <laughs> it gave me. I, I've been out. One hundred out of high school so long. I can't do any powers. Times three hundred and seventy million. Come on, Google, give it to us. All right. Well, it also just gave it to me. <laughs> um. <laughs> Whatever. This I feel like this should be the problem is the, okay. I'll say this. It's funny. Like I can, I've barely gotten to the point where I can wrap my head around like the difference between a million and a trillion and like a billion. Like it's funny how now like everybody like just to buy a house you got a million dollars, but it's thirty-seven billion. Thirty-seven billion. That's it, huh? Yeah. That leaves us a little short. So <laughs> the math is off on that one. All yeah. right. Right. Dude, my favorite is when they're like, what the hell? Look, look at the government had like a, you know, they, it was something, you know, something silly. Like the government's like money sent to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. If that was divided amongst every American, we'd each get like a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, bro, yeah. your math is so off. We'd each get like a hundred and five mm -hmm. bucks. <laughs> yeah, like maybe. And yeah. that was with the uh, same thing with something about uh, Elon Musk's like in like Val, like someone said like if he gave everybody like split his money evenly everybody would be like millionaires and it's like that's just not true yeah just not true and speaking of elon it's crazy like okay so did you watch the trump's speech last night after sorry hold on i was just before we get too far i did watch the speech i stayed up for it we're at 35.95 trillion dollars in debt i don't All know right. where my 70 i think my 70 came from the budget for defense because i think that was 70 billion I thought we were seventy at trillion in debt. We're thirty five point nine five trillion in debt. Okay. Um, but anyways, um, maybe that's just because of how much the stock market went up last night after it was declared. We just cleared that much debt in a couple hours. Um, but so we pull from taxes in twenty twenty four. We taxes provided the U S government four and a half trillion dollars. That's a lot. Yeah, it's so hard to wrap my brain around what that is. Yeah. Like, and like mm -hmm. that they spend over that every year. Like, that's, mm -hmm. it's so hard. And like, I mean, the, you, the, have you ever seen like the breakdown of like the biggest expenses for the federal government? They're all like, the first one is like um, social security. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's like the payment of employees and mm -hmm. staff in the mm -hmm. federal government. And like contractors and consultants, and then everything after that is like spending on pro uh, spend spending on departments and development and mm -hmm. infrastructure, right? So it's like it's like one of those things of you're just like, okay, well, there's no way that makes sense for the social security thing, mm -hmm. just because spending that much versus like, you know, the, if if everyone on social security is making quote unquote like roughly around like twenty five hundred a month. Mm -hmm. And it's like mostly tax free to mo to the majority of them. Mm -hmm. Then it's hard to imagine like, okay, so the, you're telling me the sixty million people on Social Security are eating up a majority of the U.S. government's budget. That that doesn't add up because we have like our, our, the the math doesn't work out to how much they collect in taxes, right? And so mm -hmm. it's one of those things where like it's just interesting to see like how they determine like what expenses versus not a non-expense but apparently social security is the number one expense for the u.s government and some of my uh bro uh bro economics on this uh -huh. i was wondering should we be putting like this all the social security money into the market no dude because the government just takes it while we pay it to them mm-hmm and then they loan it out or they just spend it. Right. So like that's the crazy thing is like if they had if every time you spent social security, like every every mm -hmm. time social security came out of your your paycheck, mm -hmm. it was invested in the stock market mm -hmm. and it just remained in the quote unquote social security fund, mm -hmm. that'd be unreal, bro. Our capital like our that's capital markets would be so powerful and strong, mm -hmm. but because the government started spending social security Mm -hmm. as a means 
back in like uh what was it world war ii i believe it was in mm-hmm. like social security was developed for funding mm-hmm. uh in the war like mm-hmm. it's one of those things of like i get the premise of like well we need this money now to spend it mm-hmm. and it's a way that we're going to take care of all those who come back and mm-hmm. like can't take care of themselves and it originally was looked at like helping the elderly veterans yeah which they already got va well, and Benefit. so it was. It was one of those things where, like, I just never thought it was like really properly thought through. Because of course they would. <laughs> they were like, we're only going to do it for the war. Well, and it worked well when you had a uh, very small, the greatest gener, the the baby boomer population, a huge population to support to support the greatest generation, yep. a much smaller population. So, mm-hmm. um, that's you know, and so I don't. Anyways, I was thinking that's what I was thinking of in my bro economics. I was just was like. That should all be at least like filtering through the market. It's only gaining, right? You know, but but it's too risky. It's also risky. But hey, I don't know. I also thought it was crazy that you could you could vote or you could bet on who would win the election this year. You can do that most years. Yeah, I just didn't. It's just way more popular now. Yeah, yeah. and that's like, uh, you want to know what's crazy? Hmm. Because of the boomer population, the estimated transfer of wealth from boomers to millennials Mm -hmm. do you know what that's going to be the great wealth transfer is estimated to transfer is it is the estimated transfer of wealth from baby boomers in the silent generation to younger generations this transfer is expected to impact millions of families over the next two decades Mm. take a guess what the total estimated in value like monetary u.s dollar value the of wealth transferred from them to us will be It's either going to be, is it disgustingly low or is it just insane amount? Because like it's on, it's unreal. I mean, trillions and trillions and trillions, five hundred trillion dollars. No, no, no. Keep in mind the U.S. government's thirty-five trillion in debt. Yeah, but I was thinking like every house that's owned and real estate and like the the whole the total dial it back. Like I said also before, (laughs) which would be once we get past a billion. Yeah, your concept is no. I don't have a. There's not. I don't think there's five hundred trillion dollars worth of natural resources <laughs> in the world. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. I think the I think the Earth is worth like four hundred trillion dollars in natural resources. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure like that's what the total value of something like all that is. Uh, no, it's going to be eighty four to ninety trillion dollars. Okay. Distributed about twenty seven million to millennials, thirty trillion to Gen X, eleven trillion to Gen Z, four trillion to baby boomers. Mm. Um, and that's just, you know, the long lived younger boomers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they think about another 12 trillion will just be, go- we'll just go to charities and nonprofits. Mm. Um, it's expected to make our generation the wealthiest generation in history. But it's mm. also like a lot of people with theorizing right now. That's got to be the gap. It, it is the gap right now. Like, but the gap even being greater. Right. Like, what like, do you mean? Like, like the wealth gap growing even greater as that transfers, like because like that's not going to everybody, right? Like like that, it's not equally doled out. Well, no, but like the issue is that we're gonna we're gonna see probably a super strained collapse as all the boomers alive enter into social security dependency, right? And all of them are collecting off of it, and the strain to support them is gonna hit everybody. No mm-hmm. matter how wealthy you are, everyone's going to have to pay more and, and pay more to support that. All that wealth transfer is going to suck back. Well, and well, then once they die off, though, and mm-hmm. we start seeing them in droves pass away year after year, mm-hmm. people are talking about estimations of like full on geographical impact and redistribution. Like of, Florida's going to be empty. No, that no, dude, I'm not kidding you. Like you're right. Like it, there, people are talking about what cities will be ghost towns, mm. and there's already commercial consultants going to businesses, consulting businesses of where to pull out of the market mm. and when to do it, because the where people who buy their products in that location will be dead for thirty years before millennials mm-hmm. get old enough. And the the I, the concept too is like there's going to be. You're, the reason like land and houses are and all that are worth a lot right now is mm-hmm. because there's a low supply. Mm-hmm. But when people, when all the boomers pass away, and we're talking like 
what happens to Bill mm-hmm. Gates when he passes, when he's dead, right? right? His stuff's going, his stuff's probably going to go into some kind of trust fund of some kind under like corporate lock and key. But like that money means nothing and has no value if there's like, I mean, not money, but those assets like uh, real estate and land don't do much for banks. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, like, dude, do you really want to sell your house to the bank? No, like, you know, like, you're never going to get good pay from the bank, right? Mm-hmm. But you know that you can make good money off of your, like, hard assets like that by selling it to other people. Mm-hmm. And the bank knows that, too. The bank knows, like, they don't get to make money off of owning land and property that mm-hmm. isn't commercially used. And uh, there's not consumer practices on that commercial land. And so, like, when they're just, when the bank just is holding private land, the bank friggin' needs to get that out of their hands and churn it because the bank makes money by you taking out a mortgage right. to pay it back in interest to the bank, you know? So that's the thing. So I think we'll see, like, I think you and I, Pat, and then these other millennials that are like, it's so hard right now. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, I don't think they understand that if we just hold out, like, another 10 years by the time we're in our 40s there'll be so much damn land for so cheap Mm -hmm. and if you got the means if you've got stuff in the market and invested and you're Mm -hmm. ready to like pull that out for down payments Mm -hmm. dude we will be able to be the next big landowners like it's just we just gotta like because yes this the boomer generation is living longer than any generation before it and they're so big they own majority of the assets but when they pass away all that needs to be handed down and put back into the mm-hmm. market for the market to make money off of it. So, because they make up like 25% of our population, which is unreal. Mm-hmm. Like, look how much like the like uh, great or the silent generation makes up, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the silent generation mm-hmm. holdovers from like World War II mm-hmm. when they were going into retirement age made up like something like 10 or 11% of the population. Mm hmm. It was just drastically lower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a. Uh, um, it's gonna be wild. I mean, imagine that, dude. Imagine that Colorado, where real estate is an unreal expensive. That like, it'll become. Yeah, it'll still be a, an expensive investment. You're still talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, in a mortgage of some kind, right? In a loan of some kind. But dude, if you got the money that you can liquidate out of investments <laughs> like stocks and stuff, which you can buy now, mm-hmm. that's going to put you in a place where you're you're the guy who's got cash in hand and can re- start doing down payments. Or even better, you maintain those assets mm-hmm. and the brokerage that you do that, like you have those assets through or the bank you have mm-hmm. those assets through. Like if you're investing through, like say you Chase bank account. Mm-hmm. The bank allows you to take a loan out against your own assets. Right. That loan is then used to buy, like put down payments on anything. Mm -hmm. And you can then, you know, essentially just cover the payment for the loan and you get to then buy, because you're not buying houses, right? You're buying, you're probably going to be buying freaking parking lots, malls. (laughs) Yeah. You're going to be buying states. You're going to be buying apartments, (laughs) right? And so it's like, yeah, I'm going to take a, I'm going to, take a loan out against my stocks so I don't uh-huh. have to sell them. Mm-hmm. There's no taxes on debt, so mm-hmm. you don't get taxed on your loan against your own assets. Mm-hmm. And then you just use that loan to get a down payment on revenue generating property mm-hmm. that the previous owner's dead and the bank's like, we're not making any money off of this. We'd make more money if we had a loan that you had to pay back on. Mm-hmm. And then you buy the apartments or the you know the parking lot whatever right and then you're like okay great sweet like we're making money here now right my whole dream is essentially to buy a strip mall and just like think about the people who own strip malls dude they Mm -hmm. don't have to do any of the maintenance for the dry cleaners Mm -hmm. they just charge the dry cleaners a monthly rate of 3500 to rent the spot right oh yeah i don't know man my dream is owning that or parking lots i'm I'm like I'm constantly looking for a parking lot to buy. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm always looking. Like, I'm just like, dude, if I could get a parking lot, that's like the best passive income generator. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love it. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. The, Anyways, uh, sorry. No, yeah. Back to the election, I guess. No, I think um, the... Uh, 
speaking of boomers and other generations, uh, I think there's one person I'm particularly excited about being at the, in their position. And RFK that's, Jr.? Uh, no. Well, him too, but uh, J.D. Vance. Yeah, J.D. Vance, crazy that he's there. He's so young. <laughs> yeah, and one thing that's crazy is that we think he's so young, meaning um, he is young, but he's 40 years old. I mean, I think that. What's the last time we had a but, president but, that was 40 uh, years old? But Obama was 47. Was he really? So that's what's crazy. Is like, Did he look so much older than that after and, this well, first presidency? Well, exactly. So what's crazy is o- Obama was 47 years old. Uh, Bush was 54 when he took office. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so over the last, you know, uh, 8, 12 years, we've like really gotten used to some really, really old folks uh, being around. Yeah. And so I'm excited for uh, J.D. Vance and, yeah, age is one thing, but also like I think that what's needs to be, if J.D. Vance was on the left, what would be being celebrated even more about him would be his rags to riches story. Oh, yeah. You know, and so I did you watch his interview with Trump or with uh, um, he was who else was young? He was on a comedian, another comedian. He's on Theo Vons. Yeah. And like his his in his interactions with them was so like blue collar. He said it was crazy. I was like, wow, this is not an act. Yeah, like, this is this dude. He said he said man and or dude a couple times. And I was like, was like, dude, you know, Congress is crazy. And I'm right. just like, whoa. That was like not like that mm-hmm. was not Steve Bus- Buscemi like hey there you like are we skateboarding later you know right. what I mean exactly exactly or like this totally fake politician speak that so many mm-hmm. people use now and so I think like I I appreciate his I think he's genuine I think he's just found himself at the second to the top seat all of a sudden not that he hasn't worked hard or yeah. maybe he doesn't deserve it but like I'll tell you this. 15, 20 years ago, I don't think that was his goal in life. Yeah. 20 years ago when he was a Marine. Yeah, no 15 kidding, years right? ago when he was a lawyer. Heck, 25 years ago when he was, you know, figuring his life out, leaving, um, you know, trying to get out of a life around poverty mm-hmm. and surrounded by, uh, you know, drug abuse, things like that. Like, I don't think he had some grand scheme like someday – maniacally i will be in charge of the world you mm-hmm. know it's like or whatever like i will be powerful yeah i think it's like i think he's just along for the ride and found himself in a awesome cool opportunity and so i, I and i think more people i want to see more people like that in our politics and in our government who they didn't set out to hold that position but they do have the merit and the capability to hold it and and Mm. that's going to be the big key changes that we have to see in our um in our government leadership is um people who aren't like heading towards that as a career goal people who find themselves in that as a for a for a stint of their career but who have the leadership and capability to do it you know Mm -hmm. and that's really i think that's really important and the way that it was like really set up in a lot of ways. And I think of about a uh, remember this was a while ago, but remember when I read that uh, letter from George Washington mm-hmm. on the podcast about him, like basically saying he was hanging it up. Yep. And it just like, I thought it was so, like, even so our first president we had, he it's, he came to the conclusion of his own volition. It was time to be done. Let other people lead. He'd, done his service done his time and now he was going to enjoy the rest of his life doing you know and it's like and that was the intent at the birth of this country and the way we set it up because unlike nancy pelosi who just now became she got her 20th uh elected senate uh session hey who keeps voting her in the Californians, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's (laughs) yeah. I always forget she's from there. Dude. Also, what's whack with Trump winning? Mm -hmm. Her portfolio took off. Oh yeah, because she's uh, she's 
Um, she's an insider, baby. She's fiscally conservative. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> all about them liberal policies, but invest fiscally mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, on the conservative side. No, exactly. Yeah, no, it, it's crazy, though, that, like, that's the... <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to get... I agree with exactly what you're saying. Like, there needs to be term limits, bro. And that was, like, one thing I was talking about was, like, we need term limits so bad in this country, right? And we also need upper age limits. Like, there is current... It's crazy to me that, that there exists no upper age limit. Um, Even with, like, modern-day healthcare, I understand the concept is, like, well, people are living longer and they're maintaining their faculties longer. And, right are able to serve longer. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. George Washington, I bet he, I'm going to guess here that he died before 84. And like shortly after retiring yeah. from politics. Yeah. I bet it was like a year or two before he was like croaked out. At like, 33. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, but um, it's one of those things where um, it, it, there, there needs to be a limit to it of like, all right, mm-hmm. is the best of the nation going to be those who are 20 years past the retirement age of the military service mm-hmm. or no. and, or no, like it's just would, not. would nobody else hire you for a job anywhere else yeah you know True. just cut like because it's time for you to be I'd done hire you as a librarian yeah <laughs> and and there's a lot of value and wisdom that, that can be brought to a job too of consulting whatever but like what i think too would be what I think is beautiful about the Washington example, too, is like a self-imposed term limit. And I do think we need term limits because we got to get it uh, the ship righted. But wouldn't it be cool if people, more people were just self-imposing those term limits, right? Yeah. And, and Like and, had the decency and integrity to just be like, it's time I'll retire. Exactly. Like I, I came here. I don't know why they were Southern. I, I don't know why they uh, were so Southern. <laughs> Because that's where you get these, some honorable folks from. I feel like that's also where you get some like dastardly <laughs> law criminals. <laughs> well, <laughs> <you know? laughs> I would have gone away with you too if it wasn't from these meddling kids. Exactly. <laughs> um, it, it's here's the weird thing is like I still think my grandfather is probably the wisest man I know, mm-hmm. and he's 82, 83 now. Yeah. Um. And he maybe shouldn't like run a Fortune 500 at the moment, or maybe he should. Maybe I mean no. I think he. Like, like, I think he'd be willing to give consultants to, to the it. CEO. I don't think he That's has like, any desire with like his, you know, energy levels and what he wants to prioritize on with what time he's got left. Exactly. In doing that. Exactly. He needs to be the guy that the CEO calls once a week for yeah. a conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so. No, oh, I, I, I 100% agree. And it's, it's it's just crazy. But yeah, I mean, and like I say this too, is like, am I happy Trump won? Yeah. Am I like pretty concerned he's not going to survive his four years? 100%. I'm, I think Trump's going to get, I'm, hey, I'll make a bet now. I think Trump's going to get assassinated or die in office. Not, mm. not because I think he's so frail and geriatric, but he is 84. And really mm-hmm. it just takes, honestly, when you're at that age, like it really takes... Like, uh, shit it takes covid bro like you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> like when he got covid everyone was like damn that's not good mm-hmm. um and mm-hmm. like it's one of those things like dude covid biden got covid and like a week later they're like all right so you're not running anymore yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh so it's one of those things, and like i i guess that's why i do love that jd vance mm-hmm. could be our next president in the worst case scenario right that mm-hmm. we have a a young strong uh you know man of integrity with a strong service record you know and he's he's just got like a he's got a firmness to his personality mm-hmm. and there's i mean and it might be just like his rbf right but mm-hmm. he's got a sternness that just makes you think like all right it's going to take more than a breeze to knock this guy over mm-hmm. we're probably not going to see him falling up the stairs to air force one right and so all I said, I guess I am enthusiastic about him being in that position. I'm very enthusiastic, though. Here's here's the thing I'm most excited about. And mm-hmm. here's the thing why I was, like, having a hard time wrapping my head around, like, why wouldn't you vote for Trump? I say that as someone who voted for RFK. Don't care what people say. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've i explained to you why I voted for RFK, and I guess I'll just say it yeah. here, like, in Colorado, Trump got 38% of the vote. Mm-hmm. I just didn't think it'd be as significant to... Our constituents here mm-hmm. if Trump had gone 39 
right. thought it was more important if they saw a third party candidate got one percent or more. Yep. And so I think a lot of other people felt that way too and voted RFK because now it's like, whoa, RFK literally like in many states got one to two percent of the vote, mm-hmm. which is big. Mm-hmm. Like I think for a lot of for a lot of third party candidates. Um, but anyways, uh, if if you were gonna vote Harris and you're not like a very strong liberal, I just don't get why you'd vote for Harris when she has like the most one of the most extremist senators of like left leaning politics. Her she herself is rather extreme in left leaning politics, whereas Trump has demonstrated to be a very moderate conservative. He has Elon Musk, who has demonstrated to be a very moderate libertarian Mm -hmm. uh, with overlaps in both conservative and liberal parties. Mm -hmm. Um, J.D. Vance is not a classical conservative. If you ever listen to him talk about his policies, like he is Mm -hmm. he is far from right wing. He's pretty moderate conservative leaning as well. Mm -hmm. Tulsi Gabbard and RFK Jr., both classical left-leaning Democrats, mm-hmm. left-leaning in policies, but are now on the transition and probably going to be likely appointees mm-hmm. to the cabinet of advisors. Mm-hmm. Like we're looking at a team of like very well-rounded, moderate. I, I would say the most conservative, far-leaning person out of his cabinet is probably Vivek. Right. And like, and Vivek is also like a very classical conservative, Mm -hmm. not like remotely. Like you can't say Vivek's right wing when he's, you know, and in he's, (laughs) he's in uh, Pacific, like not Pacific Islander, but he's like from Pacific, Pacific Indonesia Mm -hmm. uh, or Indo Asia. I mean, and with that, like if he's the most conservative guy and he's a Brown guy, right. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it's really hard to make a case that this is extremism and this is a bad vote. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's just like there, and I felt I think like that's the only reason. Like I said, I didn't vote was because I felt like it was more important to my state to see people vote for a third party candidate. Um, but I do think like if you were a, someone who's like, well, I just want what's going to be like a well rounded, you know, administration with really good um, balance of counsel on both sides. Like I don't want us to swing the pendulum super far right. Mm-hmm. And dude, you why wouldn't you vote for this? If you don't want the pendulum to swing one direction or the other, like we're looking at a conservative presidency that's one of the least conservative in our nation's history and is really Mm -hmm. just like a centrist Mm -hmm. like uh, presidency. Like I think we're going to see things not swing far right Mm -hmm. at all, which I don't want to swing far right. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to see things return to center. Like I will not be surprised if like a lot of policy comes out, you know, essentially not uh, taking away the right for a company or a platform to moderate speech. Like, I still think they'll be able to do that. Um, But they won't have the federal support and like kind of precedent of like political correctness. You know what I mean? Like there won't be the censorship of like, Hey, you can't say this and you know, we're canceling people. Right. Like, I just think that's crazy that that was up in our government at that level and that the government was literally going in the direction of Canada and the UK where you could go to jail for thinking about mm-hmm. something that was not quote unquote politically correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and for, and, and I do think like, uh, just like during, uh, 19th century stuff we had with Rockefellers, Carnegie, you know, like Vanderbilt's, um, JP Morgan, we had these uh, robber barons, these people who completely monopolized <coughs> the industries, mm-hmm. and things came into place to knock that down, to redisperse the the power uh, to the people, and and it had become we had oil barons, railroad barons, you had you had extreme monopolies in this country, and things and rules came into place to not allow that and bring competition. And the new version of that is tech companies. Yeah. And or especially around censorship and things like that too. And so I think that there will, there can be, and hopefully is some like to your point, um, some, yeah, uh, not f- that these companies don't lose their autonomy to do what they want to do, 
But there are certain companies out there who have gotten so big and so powerful, they do have to submit to the authority of rule, you know? Yeah. And so, and I think, I think with that too, like classic example is Amazon, Amazon turning off your thermostat, Amazon locking you out of your house. Right. Have you not heard about that? No, no. Dude, so it, this is not like a Jeff Bezos overlord evil thing, right? Like Jeff Jeff Bezos is, I think, more moderate than a lot of people think. He's just he's just the CEO of a company that has a lot of bad agents and bad actors in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, Jeff Bezos recently got blamed because some of the people who work for at Amazon underneath the umbrella of Amazon for like ring doorbell mm-hmm. or some of the other like Alexa, uh, it's home smart house, smart devices. house stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had found out someone had said something online or they thought, Oh no, no. What it was, it was like someone called and while on the phone, mm-hmm. like, I guess they just had to speak with customer service and the customer service rep was like, yeah, they were racist. And so they punished them by disabling their systems and like that is and like it got totally sorted out that employee was fired right because like it was investigated of course mm-hmm. and it was like okay they didn't say anything racist they just said you they said you were you know a yeah. really shitty customer service and, rep and let's say they did say something racist so what it's let's say their they house. said whatever they wanted to yeah. to you over the phone hey, well and here's the thing it's like well it's their house but it's our product and our service and it's like Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, I'm really much of the, I hate subscriptions. This idea that like, it should be like, you buy the product, it runs indefinitely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. no like subscription thing that it's they like can be Game like. Boy. Yeah, and they, they shouldn't be like, yeah, we're going to turn off the functioning of this product because we don't really like what you say on Twitter. And mm-hmm. it's like, but that's like been happening, right? And like, they've had, people have had their, uh, you know, in, in a smaller niche, if you niche it down, like people have had their prime Amazon Prime account suspended mm-hmm. for like quote unquote politically incorrect reviews and comments on the Amazon web store. Mm-hmm. Right. And people have also had uh, their Twitch accounts suspended and they're no longer allowed to stream or view on Twitch mm-hmm. because of their comments and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and now on Xbox Live, PlayStation, uh, the Call of Duty game, the latest Call of Duty game listens and uses uh speech to text transcription to identify mm. when you're saying uh improper speech mm. in order to then censor and it can literally boot you from the game and put mm. you in a timeout <laughs> and you cannot play the game if you go around saying you know to everyone <laughs> all <laughs> we things. all know we yeah. were in those lobbies yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah isn't that unreal dude like so it's like it's like one of those things like but i but i was paying it's my money so give me my money back mm-hmm. and it's like no no you agree to the terms when you use our service and our product mm-hmm. like we have the right to suspend it mm-hmm. and like you, you were just paying a licensing mm-hmm. fee and so all that said anyways i think all of that is like very weird and how they can do that and get away with it currently mm-hmm. and the yeah the the dynamic to like those old school barons and our current tech company in a, like um, interactions in our everyday lives now is very eerily similar. I think, mm-hmm. you know, cause like if that back in the day, if that Baron didn't want you in New York, bro, you were gone. Mm-hmm. You were going to be put on a boat mm-hmm. and the coppers are going to be like, listen here, buddy, don't yeah. you set foot in New York city again. Yeah. And you're gone. Like yeah. you're, you're like, all right, I guess I'm going to go to Florida. If, like <laughs> If you're lucky. Yeah. And so it's kind of weird. Like how, overlap those things are nowadays Mm -hmm. um i really do like the idea though that the u.s government is like yeah no we're not getting involved in that like Mm -hmm. uh people can sue you and it'll go to the supreme court and we'll be settled there precedent wise but like we are not making speech policy here Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. i don't know if you heard but like there's that pastor in the uk that got or no sorry in ireland i don't want to say uk I think it's in the actual independent nation part of Ireland that was arrested because he said, I, I'll i pray for you. And he said that to a woman who is, or a man that's trans, I don't know. Um, 
I can't remember the exact interaction, but he said, I'll be, I'll be praying for you. And the police came up to him and said, did you tell that woman that you're going to pray for her? And he was like, is that a crime? They're like you're under arrest for hate speech and the motive of hate. And they literally, here's the thing. If you don't believe in prayer, it's a thought then. So they arrested him for thought crime. If you do believe in prayer that they arrested him for talking to God and like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, what he got he got out he got off and he had Mm people he had a couple organizations come to his aid to like help pay for the court cases and hearings on it did it happen in the first place and it's recorded bro like this is recorded you can watch the interaction like the police be like did you say you pray for her Mm -hmm. and he's like is your crime that crime governor and like <laughs> and uh that's not irish i know that's that's british but they and they're like you own the rest for hate speech and hate think mm-hmm. and it's just like oh my lord are we this is have you li- read, this is real have you read 1984 yeah, this officer is, yeah they're like yeah it's my favorite book <laughs> yeah. i identified with those we only use news speak mm-hmm. and we arrest those for thought crimes before mm-hmm. that crime could take place Listen, listeners, if you haven't read or listened to 1984. It's so short. It's, it's like, so short. what, four hours? Yeah, listen to it um, and be disturbed the whole time. But um, grr, that just gets me, gets my kind of goosebumpy hackles up because yeah. I feel like, here's the deal. Lots of people are like, with Trump being president-elect, people are like, Jesus is saving America <laughs> and by putting this man in office and like really like hyping it up in that spiritual direction. And as we've said here multiple times, we're not about that Christian nationalism stuff. Um, uh, you know, so that being said, that caveat, I do think there is some validity to um, the direction the country has been headed around these Orwellian 1984 type Mm -hmm. thought crime, scary stuff like this that hopefully will be curbed over the next, you know, four years and then going forward, bringing us back to some common sense, you know, Uh, because we have been bordering on some cuckoo stuff. And, you know, even, and so, and honestly, even during Trump's 2016, um, President, wasn't, presidency. It wasn't as cuckoo, though. It, it wasn't as cuckoo, but we were still trending the same way with a lot of the hyper leftist silly stuff. And so. Yeah, but tell me this, bro. 2016 and 2018, those were great years. <laughs> those were some damn good years to be an American. For sure. For sure. But we still had this, like, uh, um, uh, especially in like academia, certain places. Like, oh, yeah like pronouns, whatever, all this stuff, like still the, this is when all this stuff still started. It's like, I'm, I don't think he's the, I don't think the, he's the end all be all for anything. Um, and anything like that. But I do think this does help us push the pendulum back to the middle. And I do think it's going to be something that's, uh, um, I think it's good for the country. I honestly do think that him being president is going to be good for the country. And I do think it's going to be good for the world. Yeah, I think exactly. that there's a lot of things in the world that need to be straightened out. And I don't think he's the savior, but I do think that he can bring a powerful presence to things in the world. And like we said previously on this show is that since, especially since like his assassination attempts and things, we've seen Trump become more and more um, humble. And that's my main problem with Trump that I've always had with him is he ego. just lacks an ounce of humility. His ego is so huge. And this time around, I don't know if it's just his advisors and his little committee told him, hey, you got to like tone it down. So he did it. But here's the deal. I'll say this. Trump was so Trumpy. I mean, you could use like like his face next to the dictionary for like, you know, ego. Um, he wouldn't even listen to if an if an advisor said, "Hey, if you want to be president, you got to tone down this stuff." He wouldn't have even listened to him for it. He would have um, just kept doing his thing. But he really has expressed like I think genuine care for the country. I don't think he, I honestly don't think he's in this for himself um, at this point. I would say 2016 election, he ran to see if he could become the president of the United States. Oh, yeah. Hands down. At this point, eight years later from that now to date, and it'll be 12 years later from the time he exits office, 
I think that he genuinely feels um, like being a responsibility, a, a responsibility to it. And I'm not going to completely erase his competitiveness. I think he couldn't. Sure. He couldn't. Yeah. He couldn't put away the 2020 election and just walk away. But at the same time, I. It's a different man in yeah, office for it's sure. Di- and so, and as you were stating earlier, with like the cabinet, we're potentially going to see, and hopefully we do see, a conglomerate of multiple different, you know, places mm-hmm. being filled with people who are, um, you know. Uh, traditional Democrats, some, you know, moderate Republicans, these things and conservatives. Like, I think that there is, a, we're, we're really set up in a good position for um, good change and maybe just like some, I don't, I don't think that this election, I mean, some people are losing their mind, but I don't think it's going to be as volatile as like the 2020 election. So charged. I, I think it. a lot of it depends on if the people in power can accept mm-hmm. like they no longer are in power. Mm-hmm. It, and that that's like, I, I see like a 5% chance of really, really bad stuff happening. Mm-hmm. I don't see that as, a, like I said, I just said 5% chance. I don't see it as a likelihood. Mm-hmm. But there is, I think, like a good 5% chance that the people in power now see Trump as too much of a big threat, and mm-hmm. they refuse to certify the results. Mm-hmm. And if they refuse to certify, that's bad. That yeah. is bad news. That's where it could go bad for sure. Yeah. Um, and I think, as I was reflecting on it this morning, I think people are, in general, tired of being so anxious, wound up, and caring about it. Like, I think that people have woken up I think I think that everybody's ready to just chill out a little yeah. bit, and there, you're still going to have your extremes on both sides for sure. But I think that the grand majority is just ready to chill out mm-hmm. from the last eight years of elections, COVID, civil unrest, um, and maybe I'll eat my words in two weeks from now. Sure, you know? but uh, I think well, I think it'll be later than that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because the the certification and essentially the passing on of that all happens. On January 6th, I believe. Or whatever the first yeah. uh, Monday in January is. Yeah. So. For sure. So we'll, we will see. Um, one thing, I, another part that I'm excited about is the fact that he's he doesn't have to th- worry about a re-election now. And I know some mm-hmm. people are afraid of him. Like Some people have been like... Not he's, real. Well, some people have been like, he's never going to ever... He's the, he, he said he's going to be a dictator. Yeah. You so know, I, not I'm not worried guys. about that. I think yeah. I think he'll be ready to be done. Um He's going to be an old dude by the time this is done too. But, and what I do like is what I like about a president, any president left or right in their second term, they don't have to worry about getting reelected. Yeah. So they can work the next four years. They can work and yes, they'll get out and support their, you know, the person who they want to be the next president, Mm -hmm. but really they can focus on the task at hand. They don't have to, I mean, let's be honest. You got to, turn on the uh campaign engine two years before you're elected oh yeah oh yeah well i you remember know? thinking trump was late on it right i remember because i think he really only really turned it on like mm-hmm. mm, a year like a year ago mm-hmm. and i remember one i was like damn is he really is are they going to make an official announcement because like i was mm-hmm. i really thought trump was going to endorse actually vivek because mm-hmm. it was it was after the gop first uh debate Mm-hmm. Before Trump announced his running, like mm-hmm. his intention to run again, mm-hmm. so it was mm-hmm. it was kind of kind of interesting that way. But yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree with you, man. Um, I think I think again the biggest thing we'll see that matters is those in authority right now conceding it. It's just odd, you know. Kamala has to certify her own loss and hand over the presidency <laughs> to Trump, like mm-hmm. it is Kamala president of the senate which is her just like pence had to hand it over to biden mm-hmm. um so kamala said you know to her credit uh, and i know you were telling me this earlier but like to her credit and i want to give credit where it's definitely due because this is something people didn't do with trump right but like she said there will be a peaceful transition mm-hmm. you know uh, we concede this and it was fair and square there will be a peaceful 
transition and we mm-hmm. want there to be peace. Now she did she said it say it probably under like throwing conservatives under the bus? Probably. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like it was a know, stab. It was it's one of those things of like, great, awesome. Hey, knock our socks off with it though. Mm-hmm. Like show us just how peaceful uh, really peaceful. I'm not talking mm-hmm. peaceful, pr- mostly peaceful protests. I'm talking like legit peaceful um, transition where no one dies or anything like that. No, mm-hmm. no riots, no burning of businesses. And uh, I'll be impressed. Mm-hmm. Um, all that said, I'm relieved, man. Mm-hmm. I'm relieved. Mm-hmm. I definitely am looking forward to it. I'm, I have been wanting Tulsi Gabbard to be in the White House for years now, dude. She's a baller. Tulsi Gabbard has been like someone I've been an advocate for for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, to see her there now with the, as on his transition team and hopefully on his cabinet, mm-hmm. I think is a huge move. Um, oh, yeah. And then just RFK Jr. being there, not just transfer, but he's already like been promised by Trump, like, you're going to be overseeing, like, looking into the, you know, environmental agencies. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you'll be gutting the EPA, <laughs> the F- <laughs> FCC, and the FDC. Uh, and, I mean, the FDA. Mm-hmm. And um, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like, can you imagine how they are feeling? I'm mm-hmm. I like, I'm most afraid of the FDA killing Trump or RFK before <laughs> January, dude. <laughs> the FDA killing Bro, dude, that's because that's big pharma, man. And big pharma <laughs> it's money. True. It's true. I mean, they, they've got a target on their back for sure. And I think, uh, you know, like, oh, yeah. You know, RFK is like, get me in there. <laughs> I'm going to tear this place up. <laughs> Bro, dude, I freaking love him so much. Oh, yeah. It, dude. I can't. He, he, would, he would respect the joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's going to get him, dude. I will say, I think I wish you close out talking about his, like, his, his speech last night. Because I thought it he was had a good awesome. Speech. I thought Trump it, speech. Yeah, RFK was sick. I guess or something. I, I, I don't know where he was. But I think like, they said he. They. I think Trump literally said, "I, I wish him well," mm-hmm. or "I hope he's feeling better." Mm-hmm. And so I think. Uh, uh, but that closing speech, I loved a lot of things about it. Um, I haven't watched that many uh, presidential like acceptance speeches, but I will say, like, it was pretty tame party. Yeah. Like, 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 like there wasn't confetti flying everywhere and a lot of stuff. They just played old. You know what's his name? Lee Greenwood, proud to be an American. But then he gets up there, and Trump just starts doing what he does. He just rambles on, tells stories about like he just starts. This is the best campaign. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's we doing, are the best yeah. people. But but then he was just randomly. This was unplanned. He yeah. was just going off the. Yeah. He's addressing the whole nation on yeah. every news network in the world, and he's just like, Larry, want to come up here and say something? All right, Barbara. How about you? Come up here and say you something. You had a great campaign. Yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without you. Come on <laughs> yeah. up. Say something. Just say like, something. That, that was so funny because that one guy was like waving his hands. He's like, yeah. no, say something. And he's like, okay, I guess. And he's hey. like, we're just happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and uh, it was so. But then the Dana. Oh, dude. Well, that's the thing. Did you see? Okay. Did you see? I watched the whole thing. Oh, well, yeah. But, but did you notice then Dana White's posture? He was out of his element. Hands, like hands like folded together. You mean be, when he was standing up there waiting to speak? He, he didn't know he was going to speak. No, you know, he didn't know. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but like but, as but, soon but he before was before and immediately after. Oh, really? I mean, cuz okay, so Dana White this big is guy, big man. Yeah, but not here. Like not in not in not, not in, in politics. This, not in these circles. But I'm at a poker table, yeah. table, big man. Yeah, you know, big man on, you know, all his other like in his in his arenas. Big man, but he just, I was hilarious to watch Dana White. He was sheepish. Yeah, he, he was. He had his hands folded, his shoulders were crunched in, and he was looking down like, he was like, you could tell him being, I could see him like, he looked like a middle schooler. He was like, what am I doing here? And just like, so it was kind of cool to see Dana White not, you know, um, I, just a pumped up crazy man and all the all the ego but he's just kind of like you know sitting there shoulders over like and he had this sheepish face on standing next to all these like elite people who run our country <laughs> yeah. and and then like and trump just like and dana white get up here you, know, he's you a, got he's me a, on trump you got, i mean on rogan yeah you got you got to come up here and say something and then but then dana white just whipped out his like he became dana white but like as if it like was announcer a, at a, a UFC, UFC announcer and he's just going, you know, he deserves this. Yeah. This family deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but then he had nothing else to say. So he's like, and I want to, I want to thank 
Theo Vaughn. So Theo Vaughn yeah. got the shout out. Yeah. At the, Aiden at, Ross. At the, <laughs> all the streamers for yeah. having Trump on. Yeah. And then and then Joe Rogan obviously. But so so but this is hilarious. Like and and Theo Vaughn has come up so much in the last few years. It's funny how comedians are becoming also like a weird, weirdly powerful individuals in our yeah. country. But it was just so funny to be like, uh, as it played out, I was like, you f- you ran out of stuff to say. So now you're gonna thank people, which was everybody does at a speech, and you're thanking. The Rat King, hell yeah! At the acceptance like speech of the mm. of this huge contentious political, I just thought it was hilarious, it was and, hilarious. and awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. And then he immediately like folded after he was all pumped up. He just folded his hands back down, shoulders up, and just sunk back into the crowd. Uh, and then uh, and then Trump's calling up like people who aren't even up there with him, but like golfers who come up here say something. Hey, how he's doing? And then he started talking about Starlink like a grandpa. He's like. And Elon, great stuff he has. He has a communication device called Starlink. I was like, what the hell? Have you heard of this? Yeah. Like, have you, has anybody heard of the Starlink? What the hell is this? I've never, I don't know what it is, but it's a communication device. Like, bro, it's a, set it down, set it down to Charleston. Yeah. It's, it's, (laughs) it's satellites that give you internet, but it's, he looked like a grandpa. Just like, I loved it. it I loved it. I thought it was so funny and awesome and genuine from everybody up there. Um, it was great. Um, the uh, the only thing I'd say my only critique of all those people up there talking was it was all about Trump. The only thing anybody up there had to say that would have been awesome because was like, um, uh, like Dana White, like this man deserves this mm-hmm. would be like if he had all he had said was you deserve this man Oh, because he's going to work for you. Yeah. Like, wh- like what is, is this about Trump or is this about us? Sure. And anyways, any of this and Trump brought it back around talking about what he's going to do for us too. But it just was like a there well, was I think a few he, missed I think opportunities. He, I think he opened it with a really great part. I think the mm-hmm. opening speech was really good in that, like he was talking about how every American, regardless of a political affiliation, mm-hmm. you know, deserves to live in a country that is strong, and like mm-hmm. he's going to work hard for every American, regardless mm-hmm. if they voted for him or not. And I was mm-hmm. like, that was like the first I think like. Like non polarizing three statements minutes. from Trump too. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was really happy about that. I was like, mm-hmm. you, you got to acknowledge that. Like, yes, you got the popular vote, but like, there's a lot of people who you know hate you and have tried to kill you. So, <laughs> yeah. and like the fact that he did that, I was just like, that's mm-hmm. good. It was unreal though. The meltdown of Twitter and Reddit. I didn't. I didn't see. Oh, it. Dude, I, I stayed Reddit away from wasn't that today. as bad as Twitter, but Twitter, bro. The, it was lit- they had to clean it off the front page, but kill myself was trending, <laughs> and I was just like, "Yikes, dude, that's unreal!" And people like straight up seeing the map going red, and they're like, "Guys, I swear, I'm literally gonna sewer slide tonight!" And I was just like, "I can't imagine being in that position." Mm-hmm. I can imagine like the worst case scenario being like, like if Kamala had won, I would be like. All right, well, time to work harder. I guess there's going to be probably a couple more Ruby Ridges, but that's yeah. probably I'm yeah. not going to harm myself, right? <laughs> you know like, what I mean? They're being like, well, I guess interest rates aren't improving the next four years. Yeah, exactly know? right. But like, people are somehow convinced that like Trump literally wants to like genocide people. I'm like, okay, when did that happen? His first time? Who protected you? No one. Mm-hmm. And when did he do it? Never. Mm-hmm. It's, it was like. You don't need to worry about it. Um, so we'll see how things go. I, I definitely appreciate his call to like commodity and, you know, his acknowledgement of other Americans. Um, so we'll see how things plant pan out. But I genuinely think like the next two years will be an awesome, great step in the right direction. I'm, I even welcome some uh, economic downturn. Mm. Like I welcome an economic. Where's the Where's the case of beer at? Don't grab another one of that. We gotta We gotta draw out of the case of beer. Oh, we're drawing from the beer. Yeah. And there's two at the top. There's two at the top. Oh, on, I gotta I gotta stir them up for you. Oh, all right, all right. Um, but uh, the downturn. Yeah, the downturn. I, mm-hmm. I just don't even. I think it'll be a quick it, upturn. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I welcome a bad econo- economy for the first year or two if it means destroying our amount of debt. And the amount of spending the government does. Mm-hmm. Certainly. And so, yeah, I think that we kind of said it here where I think that the uh, 
similar to I really appreciate Lincoln and his Oh, I drew it. He I drew, drew the it. holiday ale. I drew the holiday ale, people. All right, I think we're about to close it down here. I'm going to crack this beer as probably like the closing of this this, okay. this show, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the deal. I think that um, we've talked about Lincoln before and his ability to build a team around him of people who he disagreed with. And just like how in the speech, I love that Trump was like, he was like, and Bobby, stay away from the black gold. He's referring to Kennedy. Like <laughs> yeah. he's like in his speech, he's like, Bobby's going to stay away from the black gold. Don't worry. Don't worry. But he's going to be working on this over here. Yeah. Um, he's putting people around him who he doesn't uh, agree with 100%. And that is how you build a strong team. Yep. What was it called for Lincoln? What was the team called? Um, it's like Lincoln's. Uh, Lincoln's like, an, oh, it was that book by that lady. Um, it's a. Uh, it was. I need. To, we need to read the book. And I, I've, I've like I've read parts of it and things, but you know, essentially, you know, it, to team to, of rivals, team of rivals. team of rivals, exactly. Lincoln's team of rivals, and that's what we need. <clears throat> we need that's a team what we of got rivals, this year. and that's what we're getting. We're getting. Hopefully, he continues to appoint people. I guess like, like it's it's all uh, conjecture now, but hopefully, he appoints people who are his rivals, and he can put his ego in check. Um, throughout the next four years and actually work towards you know getting us where the where the country needs to be Mm -hmm. amen hey ken uh thanks for joining us we hope you're doing all right um we hope that you're enjoying this uh cool down into november and uh yeah we hope that uh if there's anything you're looking for whether it be uh holiday gifts or anything like that feel free to check out our links especially to Primary Arms. If you're looking for gifts for him, there's a lot of them on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll probably make a list even. I think we should do mm. a top 10 gifts for him make this season. Christmas list. Yeah. All right. Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks for listening, folks. And until next time. Wait, take a sip. Ugh. Is it just as bad? <clears throat> it's bad. <laughs> Okay, all right, hold it. Mix this around and I'll draw. All right. Does he want me to draw this one? This one? No! Thanks for tuning in. If you love this episode, drop us a review. If you have qualms or comments, leave us a voicemail on our website. While you're there, check out our latest news, merch, and deals from our sponsors. Till next time, Ken. <laughs>